There we go. What's going on, man? I'm good, dude. How are you doing? Oh, man. Fucking going stir crazy at home. Oh, man. You and me both, dude. It's all going crazy. I'm keeping occupied, though. I got two kids driving me crazy. And, uh, fuck. I don't know. I'm starting to. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out some shit to, to keep me occupied. I'm starting to. I want to make some bread, so I started that thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm a. I've I've been fucking scheduling podcasts. That's why I fucking hit you up yesterday because I was like, I just did one right now. I started around one. Went for like an hour. And uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's good. And uh, bit yeah, of, bit of peace and quiet in the in the room away from everybody. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, yeah. The kids are quiet though. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty lucky. The kids. Uh, I've been pretty good for the past two weeks. That's How about good. you? I'm good, man. I got a I got a home office set up here now for work, but you know, there's only so much you can work and so much you want to work. So yeah, trying to keep my brain occupied. So Jade wanted to start making some bread too. Funny enough, I think she got the idea from you, but uh, I I decided I'm gonna make a board game. I saw that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I decided to invent my own board game. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I went with Brooklyn Nine Nine. I don't know why. You like that show? Oh, I love that show, dude. I love that really, show. Really? Huh? Yeah, it's so good. So good. Okay, I gotta, I gotta start watching. I've watched like a few episodes when it first came out, but mm. I never got into it. But I mean, I've seen clips and it looks pretty fucking funny. Yeah, no, it, it is pretty funny because it's like a, it's like a, your, your usual slapstick comedy, but it's like. It's it's slightly more educated than a slapstick. Oh yeah. And it and it tackles like real issues as well at the same time, but also like they're cops, so they gotta be able to be smart enough to be detectives, but stupid enough to get into the shenanigans they get into, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Is it a thirty minute show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They got the whole like I think they got five or six seasons on Netflix now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's I've seen good. it on Netflix and I'm like, uh eh, I'll get there. Yeah, no. Fuck, no. I got I got four weeks at home. I gotta figure out a way to stay occupied. Fuck. Yeah, like we we gotta start like spacing out what we're watching because we just binge watched that Tiger King thing in like two days. Dude, how <laughs> good is that shit? Oh my god! <laughs> like what? I, I'm I I started watching it. Uh, I was on Twitter last week and I started seeing Tiger King trending. Yeah. And I was like, what's this fucking Tiger King? And then I saw. I didn't really look into it. I was like, well, whatever. And then I saw Tiger King Netflix trending. And I'm like, okay, it's a show on Netflix. So I didn't do any research. I saw it trending on my uh, on my menu on my Netflix. And I was like, all right. I hit play one night. My wife's like, what are you watching? I'm like, I don't know this thing, Tiger King. I'm like, let's just watch one episode. Dude. Yeah. I watched one episode. Dude. I was like, uh, holy shit. Like, it took yeah. everything for me not to watch all seven episodes because so, oh I said God. I gotta space it out. I was I was laying on the bed. Jade was because Jade's teaching uh, from home. Yeah. So she was online. She was teaching from home in the sitting room, and I was in the bedroom, was laying on the bed, and nothing was on Netflix. You know, it, it automatically plays ads when you're not watching something. Yeah. And I started playing this ad for Tiger King, and I was like, "What is this gold? This is just pixie dust right now." And as soon as she was finished teaching, like, the second she hung up the phone from teaching, I went straight out and went, "Babe, this is what we're watching." And I played her the trailer, and she was like what is this? I was like, I don't know and I don't care. This is what we're watching. And we binged that thing in like two days. Dude. It's some welcome distraction for sure. Like, Oh, yeah. Everybody's eating it up. Everybody's watching it. Everybody's talking about it. Oh and this fucking God. guy, this poor guy is sitting in jail right now has no idea he has what the got a fuck clue. is going on. He has on. no idea what's happening. <laughs> he has no idea. He just became the most famous man on the planet. He has no idea. <laughs> Oh, what dude. a fuck, yo! But the way these fucking people live, man. Yo, dude. Well, what was your take on it? Like, who? Um, like, did you see well, the guy in a back line, all of it? Here's, look. At the end of the day, uh, I felt bad for Joe Exotic. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, ha- I felt for the guy. Um, I, I, when, and when it was all, when it all came together at the end, and I saw that he. He went from this guy that really gave a shit about the cats at first, mm. and then he saw how much fame and money it brought him, and then he fell in love with that, and he forgot mm. about the cats. And it was all about 
fame, money, trying to use these cats to try to basically make himself a celebrity. And, dude, just... Obviously, the guy has some fucked up demons, so I kind of sympathize with that. But, like, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, like, even if you look at, at Carol, the, the woman, like, to me, like, she's the most... When I looked at I saw her eyes the first time. I'm like, that woman, it, there's yeah, something dude. evil. She, she's, she looks evil. That, that grin, the way she dismisses things. Yeah. The, the, the thing with Carol, and I told my wife about it, and I, I even re- rewinded. I said, look at how she answers questions. Because we were watching mm, and she, she was answering. everything. And I was like, she's lying. And you could tell that she's not... She's not lying to the question that she's answering, but she about the whole situation about not knowing what happened to her husband. You could tell that she knows because every time the subject is up, you could see that she's always trying to um, make herself uh, not think about the fact that she knows what happened to her husband. So she That's always it, yeah. answers questions in a way to like distract her from thinking mm-hmm. about her husband being dead. And I knew that I, I, I've i always been a good judge of people that are lying and stuff. So it's like I, – and I, I, brought, I played it back for her and she's like, you're absolutely right. She's like, I never noticed that. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. She's, she's always like make, trying to either make it funny or just answering it in a way that no one would answer a simple question. Like yeah. repeating the question and then re-answering it in her own way. It's like – yeah you Using the question as an answer is not giving an answer to a question. It's you can see thing. she's just buying herself time at certain points when she's talking about certain things. And the oh, way she, sure. the way she's so like, like it, it be cra- like everything that people bring against her, she's all like, it doesn't make sense. It's crazy to think that. And I'm like, well, no, we all see it. Like, why can't you see it? You know? Yeah, exactly. It's a and bit like, fucked was, up, man. There was even one scene where she said. Um, Oh, I, the last time I see my husband, he said, I've got to get up early, early, early. Cause I got to, I got to flight to Costa Rica. And then a few minutes later, it, like that was like a, an interview she did back in the day when it first happened. And then when she's doing the interview now, she says, the last thing he ever said to me was, oh, he's got to get up early, early, early. Cause he's got to go to Miami. I'm like, wait, you said two minutes ago, he's going to Costa Rica. Now you're saying oh, he's going to Miami. I didn't catch that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you're lying about something. That you're, the part that annoyed me about her was that she was considered a humanitarian because she's saving all these tigers. Yeah. But yeah, she had the exact same thing that Joe Exotic had and that doc dude had. But the only difference was she didn't pay her staff. They were all vo- she tricked these people into volunteering for it, and it was called a human and she called a humanitarian for it. Fuck that. No. She, her husband also freaked me out. Like there's yeah. something fucked up in that guy. Like there's just I sometimes I just look in someone's eyes and I go, yo, there's something messed up behind that shit, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That guy and was. He, go. Didn't he look exactly like the the husband that died? <laughs> he kind of did. Long, lengthy, yeah. like the same thing. It's, but you could tell. You could tell th- what I got from him was that he's probably a guy that's been all of his life couldn't get women. I, I know it sounds fucked up to say, but like she, I, in my idea, she basically that look, I'll let you fuck me and you just you do, do and say exactly do everything. You're smart. You, you, the, the man is extremely smart, right? You could mm-hmm. tell that she's like, you're going to do my dirty deeds for me, like legally while I fucking connive everybody and working for me for free and letting people think that I'm the good guy and all this while I'm trying to shut down yeah. Joe Exotic and all these other motherfuckers. Yeah, she's the most evil, in my opinion, in all this fucking thing. Because th- there's no doubt that she's hiding something. And the fact oh, that yeah. she, she's trying to portray herself as this angel, it's just... No. At least Joe Exotic, at a, after a while, he was like, yo, I'm... Like, like he I'm wasn't holding hiding it. behind anything. <laughs> yeah, he was He was very... He, he was an asshole, but he he was, he would tell you he's an asshole. Yeah, Same he wouldn't that, hide that, it. That doc dude, that doc dude was a... He was an asshole... Yeah, but, that guy hated yeah. Yeah, but like at least they admitted it. She was like, no, I'm I'm a sweet innocent person. No, fuck that. No, 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 no. Um, I don't know. At the end, at, in the end, um, <laughs> I mean, he did commit a crime, so obviously he deserves to be in jail. But 
Yeah, but there's for so like, much oh, going on. Five matches, what he, like, yeah, like I feel like like the the whole like he put a hit out on her and stuff. That like spoiler alert: anyone hasn't seen it, watch yeah. the show. But uh, the whole he put a hit out on her. I think all that was bullshit. I think it was bullshit. The amount of times he made videos online so about how he was gonna kill her and stuff. Nothing ever comes about it. But then this Jeff dude turns around and says to the feds, "Oh yeah, he told me he was gonna get this guy that I'm friends with that he hates. He's gonna give him three grand to go to Florida and kill her." And yeah, I I could easily see that that new guy there, the fucking the guy that's always dressed in affliction. Uh, uh yeah, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. I could easily see that him and that other guy there that they filmed in the bathtub, whatever this guy's name was. Yeah, that, that weird dude with the, with the fake teardrop tattoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could easily see Jeff wanting to take that zoo away from, from Joe and, and basically him and the other guy just saying, like, just say that he paid you and uh, or he said that he was going to pay you to kill that. And, that. and then in the end, he didn't even go through with it, right? It was kind of yeah. like he chickened he out. He didn't right? even go to Florida, yeah. Basically, he's in jail right now for the animal thing. He's not in jail for the. the thing. Uh, yeah, that all led to it, though, right? Like, if, if if they hadn't got him in jail for that thing, they wouldn't have got the warrants for the animal for all thing. All stuff. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, at the end of the day, like, he he makes a statement in it, which, you know, I'm probably gonna be an asshole for saying it, but I kind of understand it. It's what well, he killed like four or five or six tigers or something like that. But like, he made a statement in it saying like, well, the tiger was sick, so you're either gonna trank it or you're gonna put a bullet in its head. Yeah, and you know I understand that if you have a horse and the horse breaks its leg, you got a racehorse and and the racehorse breaks its leg, they take it up behind the barn, they shoot it in the head. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. pretty much documented they do that to horse because they they're no good for anything, you know. After a while. Exactly, exactly. So if you got a dying sick tiger, you know, and you're gonna have to put it down, okay, you're gonna put it down. So that's and essentially what he's being killed, or like what he's in prison for. It, but it's just it's phrased. I'm phrasing it in a nice way. They're phrasing it in a bad way. And it's also. Kind of, you have to think. I, I I spoke about it on the podcast I recorded earlier with my friend, and I said uh, it's a lot cheaper to put a bullet in their head than to euthanize them the right way. That yeah. that thing they use to euthanize. I mean, I've been in a, a in a vet. I've worked in a veterinarian clinic when I was young, and that it's not cheap. It's expensive. Yeah. And for those big cats, bigger animals, they need bigger amounts. And in my opinion, it's just like the the bullet is cheaper. One bullet behind the head, and that's it. You know? That's it, and he and he was already shouting out quarter of a million to fight Carol, so he couldn't afford it. He's a nice animal. <laughs> but even that other guy there, Doc Mantle, whatever the fuck that guy's name is, like he pretty oh, much yeah. said, or people pretty much know that once once he can't get any use of the small cats and they're adults after a year, they fucking they get rid of them. Yeah, he 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 incinerated them or some shit. He, he burnt them or something? Yeah, I think I think that he euthanizes them and then he cremates them after. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's it took me a few episodes to understand the business of big cats. I yeah. thought I thought at first that it was just it was all about the power structure about Hey, I'm fuck like, cause you know, you'll see Mike Tyson when he was fucking world champ with a fucking tiger and his fucking Lamborghini yeah. or his, you know, his, his Ferrari. And then you'll see all these fucking rich people in, in Dubai and whatever. They have these fucking tigers and lions and you're like, it's a yeah. power scheme. Right. And then the, the more the information came out, then it came out that no, these guys are using the cubs. In order to become fucking celebrities and make money. And then once the cubs are no longer needed, it's way too expensive to keep these fucking things alive. So they That's just it. kill them. So so once I kind of figured out that business and a few episodes in, then the, the whole sympathy for uh, for Joe Exotic kind of went down after a while. Yeah. Uh, even for the other people, you know, I, I at the end of the day, I don't really agree with what they do, but like – Dude, no. they have they have fuck they, they live in the United States and they have tigers. Like just how f there's more tigers in the state of Texas that there is in the whole wild. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. It's uh, so there's more tigers in the United States in captivity than there are in the whole wild. In like just wild. that fucking statement blows my fucking mind. So and, 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 no, go on, go, go. No, 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 no. That, that's it. That's my point. Yeah. No, like, 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 there was one, there was one guy on, like, on the, on the show, and 
I can't remember how we said it, but the, like I, I'll give Netflix their credit. They know how to make a documentary. They know how to how to piece together and edit shots so that you feel every kind of way about each person. Yeah. And the, and the whole situation. They're very good at it. And there was a moment where you're like, oh yeah, oh my God, there's something like 10,000 tigers in captivity in America, but it's only 4,000 in the wild. And you're like, oh, that's fucking horrible. That's terrible. But then this old guy comes on and he says, well, we're breeding these animals in, you know, we have these, these private zoos. We're looking after these tigers. We're breeding them. The ones in the wild are dying. Who do you think is going to be the saving grace of the of the race of tigers? Yeah. It's the ones that have it in captivity who are breeding more of them. And I was like, oh, well, shit, that's also true. If we want to keep these tigers on the planet, if they're dying in the wild by themselves, then, yeah, we need to breed more of them. Yeah. Which it makes sense, make sense it's a, right? It's a horrible way of doing it, though. Yeah, because in the, in the, in the process of just keeping this uh, species uh, – thriving you're using mm. them to make uh, to, make, to money. make money like huge amounts of money and then you kind of use them as a thing because you can discard them when you don't need them anymore right that's it it needs to be like there needs to be about like a like, like a balance of both as in like if i got 20 tigers or 30 tigers and i'm gonna breed them I, I should be allowed to breed them provided that they're cared for and they're looked after and I don't make money like I make money off of breeding them and helping the species but I don't make money off of people petting them and mauling them and fucking bringing one in a suitcase to Vegas so people can take pictures of it in a hotel room like at the, at the end of the day there was a scene in the whole thing that I will never forget and it's in the first uh, it's not in the first it's the first or second episode I forget they they're showing this footage of this family that's sitting down to take a picture. It's got it's mm. got two kids, uh, uh, mom and dad, and behind them, just above them, is this big giant fucking tiger with one yeah. person holding this leash. And in my head, I'm like, if this tiger decided to be a tiger right now, he would go for the fucking smallest child because he knows like that's the weakest of all these four right here. And there was a mm. young child there, and I was like. Oh, it, it made me sweat because I'm like, there's zero, zero. Number one, I told my wife, I said, of all these fucked up characters there, Joe Exotic, uh, Doc, and uh, that crazy woman. Mm. If I, if you convince me one day to go, okay, we're going to go to this fucking safari place. They have tigers. You get to pet them. And I'll be like, okay, let's fucking check it out. We're on vacation. Let's check it out. If I walk into a place and I meet a man like Joe Exotic or a man like Doc or, or a, a woman like that, I would look into their eyes and I would go, awesome. And I would turn around and I would like <laughs> – I would never trust my family around an, an environment that these people are in charge of ever, ever. Because in my uh, – I could smell the crazy off, especially like Joe Exotic. And if this motherfucker yeah, came at me with his gun, I'm like – I'm done. No, no, no. He 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 wore his crazy like a different hat. Like, yeah. He was he was so far out there. But he, how crazy are the people to want to put their three and four year olds on front of a full grown tiger and say go play? That's fucked how, up, man. How how stupid must you be to do that? It is. It's a special kind of stupid. I don't know. I I, I can't explain it. It's. I think that. Fuck, man. They, the way they sold it in the documentary on how, like, just having the opportunity to pet a cub or to hold these these tigers that you shouldn't be able to hold or pet because they're they're wild fucking animals. Being around an animal that in one swipe, in one bite could kill you. Man, I've oh. Fuck, I, I've never been around that, so I don't know how intoxicating, but it must be some sort – like there was a guy in the, in, the, in the documentary, like a client of Joe Exotic. He's like, I come here like two, three times a week. He's like, I've yeah. been here like six times in the last month. I'm like, you pay all this money every single time just to pet a tiger? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, he's like, dude. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. I'm like, fuck, man. But you know what? Like I, I was having this conversation with some with somebody else the last few days, and, uh, and they were saying, "Oh, it's a power thing." And I was like, "I don't, I don't think it's a power thing. I don't think it's like I have power over this tiger because no one thinks I have power over a baby. No one ever thinks like that unless you're completely screwed up in yeah, the head." Yeah, yeah. 
I personally think it was about, you know, this feeling of I am next to an animal that if it wanted to could rip me apart, but it's choosing not to. And it's that opportunity to seize the advantage of I'm going to be friends with you. And people are being very opportunistic and saying, I want to make friends with this thing before it rips me to shreds. Mm -hmm. And when you're put into that position, the first thing you're going to want to do is make friends with it. And I think that's that's what it is. It's just when, when you then have 200 odd friendly tigers behind you, you're like, OK, now I get the power part of it. Now who's going to fuck with me? I got 200 fucking tigers that are willing to go to bat for me. What what do you think? There's one thing that was extremely intriguing to me in this documentary, and it is how um, people for Joe Exotic for it was more notable noticeable for Joe Exotic and for um, Doc. Uh, mm. How fucking loyal are the people that work for these people? I I did find that very fascinating as well. Like the the guys like Joe Exotic had a fucking girl that got her arm ripped off and was back at work within five days because she yeah. didn't want to miss. Like she said, like you could save my arm, but I'm gonna be off for work for whatever. Lo- no, no, just chop that shit off. I want to get back to work asap. Mm-hmm. And the other guy with no legs too. I mean, it's like these guys were like they were ride or die for that guy the whole way through. They they admitted that he might have done some shady shit, but they were. They were such in love with the animals mm. that they just accepted. Was it the animals you think, or was it he was uh, think, he had them under their spell? I I think it was a bit of both. I think I think he found people that needed help, needed guidance. He was able to see it in them. He found people who were down and out, and he was like, "I'll take a chance on you. I'll pay you every week. I'll give you a place to stay. I'll give you a job, and you get to do something that nobody else gets to do, and that's play with." grown ass and baby tigers you know you get to this is what you get to do for a living that nobody else gets to do which then gives them a sense of a social status that they wouldn't normally get then when they get to start doing it on a regular basis they fall in love with the animals and then now it now it's become so it's gone from now i get a bit of social status i get a bit of help i get a weekly wage i get a place to live it's gone from that hold on them to now it has a this is the guy that gave me all that but now I love all these animals now as well. And I have a responsibility for these animals. And this is the guy that allows me to take care of these animals. So in a way, it's 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 master manipulation to a point. Like master manipulation. Same for that guy, uh, uh, Bikram, who, who did the yoga. Have you seen that, that documentary yeah, for him? I, I didn't watch the documentary, but I've heard about how it basically became a cult at some point. Or oh, some yeah. Sh- like that, that dude, he was the exact same, a master manipulator. He knew exactly what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. And it was perfect. He was literally the perfect manipulator. It's – I see the point of view of these people because I'm like if if Joe if, – if if some of these people really love those big cats, so mm. – and they'll do anything and that they'll take any opportunity to be able to work around those cats, right? Mm. And they'll be willing to give up a lot of their freedom or a lot of their – I don't want to say freedom, but you know what I mean? Like that they, they'll be like, yeah, that guy can manipulate me. I don't give a fuck. He, he gives me my drugs, <laughs> you know, like a lot yeah. of it. He got two straight men that weren't obviously not gay to marry him mm-hmm. just because he was supplying their habits. You know what I that's mean? It. So in a way that's evil to me because you're taking advantage yeah. of someone's weakness. Right. But that's it. They were Netflix or whoever was in charge of this documentary was really good at showing that side, but also showing why he did it. Like, I think especially for Joe Exotic, like he's so broken. I think it all started and my wife said it. It all started when he told his father he was gay and his father didn't accept it. And then that's and right. It's the perfect example of what can happen if you don't support your children. Right. That's it. If you don't support your kids. Then they they can they end up like Joe Exotic. There you go. There's a poster. Yeah. Support your kid, or they end up like Joe Exotic. And and I think that even though he did take advantage of these people and their habits and their uh, and all that shit, mm. he was fulfilling something that was missing in his life. So he was like, well, I need uh, someone in my life uh, just to feel love. So I'll I'll take it, you know, and I'll yeah. I'll use. 
I'll do I'll get it in any way possible because it's like that was his drug. The the being love for Joe Exotic, that was his meth, that was his coke, that was his heroin. That's and it. he's like, I'll get that love any way, shape, or form. I don't care who I hurt and whose life I ruin. It's like I'm going to get it. And when he discovered he could get it through the cats, it then then it became amplified. I mean, that motherfucker recorded his whole life. Yeah. That's why this documentary is so great because there's so much footage. Do you, do you, that's the only part of it that actually confused me was was like about the whole documentary was most of the footage came from the guy who was doing the reality show. Yeah. But like three quarters of the way through the documentary, they explain how the building got burned down and all of his footage was inside it. Yeah. So where the hell, how the hell did they get all the footage? There's, I think the the thing that was is that there the a lot of that footage was, yeah, you're right. I think it was either after, uh, or, yeah, they didn't really explain that. I didn't really get no, that. Either. Yeah, they didn't really explain that part because, like, the guy says, oh, I, I I didn't back up any of my footage. It was all in that building, but all the footage that he had was used in the documentary. So how the hell did they get that footage? Yeah, I well, think he lied and did actually get it out before it burned down. Well, I think that's what they kind of insinuated, and they mm-hmm. didn't want to say it. I think there's a lot of things they insinuate in the documentary uh, that they know to be true, but they can't say it legally. And yeah. I think he did say, like, at the end that uh, – because, you know, I, you remember at one point he he's secretly videotaping a conversation uh, in, right, the, yeah. in the in the in his lawyer's office, and his lawyer's like, well, you know what to do, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, I get it. And it, he got that he needed to burn down the building, like Joe Exotic – burnt down the building but yeah himself just to get rid of the evidence and all the footage because he understood that none of that footage was his that's it he he didn't realize when he signed that he was signing over basically everything that was being recorded Mm -hmm. and once he realized that he's like oh wait i can't get any money off of this like if shit go hits the fan and these guys decide to cut the plug they get access to all this footage and i can't have anything so I think after that he was like he he smartened up right and he smartened oh, up yeah. in an evil way right. He got he got real smart real quick and he was like okay I'm gonna go back to my hillbilly ways and I'm gonna burn the place down. Yeah. That was it. It's uh ah oh, man it's fucked up but it is what it is I guess fuck. Hey that's what happens when you have a mullet you're in <laughs> fuck Oklahoma you know you're you're gun toting doing meth all the time and you got two hundred tigers by like by your side. You're going to do some crazy shit. Dude, you could tell that guy was like just itching to pull that gun out of his fucking holster to kill somebody. Oh, yeah. He was dying to do it, wasn't he? Like, he dying he, to do it. you could tell he's the type of guy that's super proud to have his guns. Oh, yeah. Has yeah. no idea how to use them. I he saw a shoot a few times. I was like, fuck. Like, you could barely shoot something here. <sighs> yeah, dude. If that guy was ever put in a situation where he really needed to use his gun, he, he probably would freak out so much that he couldn't even aim at fucking – he couldn't hit no. a fucking barn. Oh, God, no. He was – he was like, <laughs> he, 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 he pulled a, a pistol out and he, he shot some dummy thinking it was that crazy chick. And yeah. Like, he, went, he, he, he was like this. He went, boom, and I hammered back over <laughs> I was like, dude. He dude. did that on camera and posted that on YouTube. Yeah, man. Freedom of speech in America is fucked up because you could basically threaten to kill somebody live on the internet, and then you're like, yeah, man, you could say and do whatever the fuck he wants as long as he doesn't commit a crime. As long, yeah, it's like, we, <laughs> was it some uh, the lawyer I think says it? And he's like, um, you can have freedom of speech. We only punish you after the act. Yeah. That's fucking terrible. That's terrible. I could say anything about you or anything, and no one could give it. No one can do anything. That's oh so ridiculous. Well, I suppose if their if their president can do that, then I suppose everyone else should be allowed to do it too. He does it on live TV. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, that guy's fuck all kinds of fucked up. I seen a I seen a meme literally about about five minutes before we started this. It was a meme of Donald Trump and uh, the head the head of the health department for the coronavirus or something like that. And the 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 meme was when you say something so stupid that the head of the health department for the coronavirus is touching their face and they're just standing there doing this. Oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is gold. I I feel like you know, like when they voted for Trump and they elected him as their president. Like I'm not American. I have I know I know obviously I know I know some Americans and mm. it's 
I, you know what's hard for me is that the fact that we pretty much live on the same plot of land that's just divided by a fucking imaginary line, right? Yeah. Like, we are all about, like, Canada and the United States, we're pretty much around the same age as country-wise, you know, ever since we came, all, everybody came over from England and Europe and everything. Like, we... Sometimes it hits me real hard how different Americans think and are in comparison to Canadians or or Irish or anybody else. Well, it's 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 generations of of brainwashing. It's generations of and I'm going to I'm going to use the term brainwashing because it is genuinely brainwashing. It's you know, we are the greatest country in the world. You know, God bless everyone and God bless America and it's you know, it's, we're, we're the land of the, uh, the free and the home of the brave. So, you know, in saying that statement, it's like, oh, so every other country is not free or brave. And it's, it's generations of that being bred into people for however old America is. And now it's like, OK, now now we fully believe it. And now we are we are supposedly the greatest country in the world. And it's not true. It's just not. The, uh, uh, the thing that freaks me out is that. A lot of people obviously voted for him and he got elected as president and everybody made a stink about it. it the thing that scared me about Donald Trump is there's no in between. Yeah. It's, you either hate him. Uh, but here's the thing, though. You, you either hate him as a president. Right. You don't necessarily hate you. You'd love him if he was on TV entertaining you right now. But he was just a, a reality TV show host. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he's. He's in charge of the fucking whole nation. Now you're like, this is can't, this doesn't make any sense. So the thing that freaks me out is that there's two extremes. You either love Donald Trump for the most part, or you fucking despise the fact that he's the president of the United States. Yeah. I think though, I might be wrong. I'm not American, and I don't want to speak out of term, and you know, I, I, out of respect, but yeah, I think that I could easily imagine that there's a lot of Americans that voted for him and supported him that mm -hmm. are going right now fuck he mm -hmm. is not the right man to be in charge right now during this fucking crisis no not even a little bit and, and like, I'm not talking about him as a president right now I'm talking to him about a person that is in charge of making decisions to save people's lives mm -hmm. and he you could easily see that he couldn't give two fucks no. About your grandfather dying about of the coronavirus. He no, is genuinely shit. just interested in how are we going to keep our economy the biggest and strongest economy in the world, which they aren't, right? They're I, not, I no, they're not at all. all. No, I, so. I, I remember looking like because I looked at the stats for that ages ago for uh, a segment on a podcast I was going to do with a friend of mine, um, and I was like. Overall, like over everything, like you're talking about uh, healthcare, you're talking about schools and education, you're talking about jobs and unemployment and all this sort of stuff. If you look at the whole world, the US is like 15th. 15th, easily. And That's... like, like for example, okay, uh, the, the, the United States spends um, more than any two countries combined on the military. Okay. Yeah, that's insane. Which is intense, right? And here's a couple of fun facts for you. The United States has been in over 200 wars since World War II and hasn't won a single one of them, which is hilarious because they're all very quiet about it. Very, very quiet about it. 200 different wars that America has been involved in since World War II and hasn't won a single one of them. The next funny thing is they go ahead and they try to invade Iran and Iraq and there's all these funny memes about how these countries have oil so therefore they now need liberty so America's going to come in and do it. Who says America gets to do that? Why Why are they the ones that's allowed to just say, oh, you deserve liberty so we're going to give it to you because we're the most liberal country in the world? Fuck right off. But the the most hilarious part about all this is all all the, the, the Americans in like Afghanistan and Iran and things like that and they're – fighting for freedom and they're fighting for you know their country and stuff how many americans get killed doing that okay now here's here's the like i found this fact mind-blowing and i only I literally found out about it last night there was 51 doctors in italy who were diagnosed with the coronavirus that died this week 51 doctors okay 
That is more than the amount of American soldiers that have died in Afghanistan from aggressive fire from an Afghan in the last three and a half years. Wow. So that means more American soldiers have died in Afghanistan from friendly fire than aggressive fire. I, I, there's a reason why I choose not to get into any sorts of politics, even in our in in our own country here. Like it's, it's I, I have no interest in it, and I've never. There's no positive for me and for my life that comes mm-hmm. out of being part of any or being part of any. Look, I'm an adult. I'm a family man, so I need to kind of stay in the loop to understand, like just to be able to protect my family That's and to it. be able to put my myself and my family in the best position available, right? Mm. So I I stay. I keep an eye out and an ear open to the whole thing. I won't lie. Like I'm not an expert, but I do pay some attention. But yeah, I try to have zero conversation about something that I have zero interest and zero knowledge in. I don't pretend to know anything about this. And people have their own opinions and make their own research. I choose not to because it's just not something I, I it's it doesn't interest me. And I don't want to spend any energy in it, right? Only like when I, it starts totally impacting me, like super, like financially, and my and it starts impacting my family, where I'm gonna start having a voice or at least start doing my research so that I don't speak out of turn, right? That's it, yeah. I so mean, I, I just feel like I just genuinely feel, and this is the only thing I'm gonna say about this, that mm-hmm. the the American people right now are going through a huge crisis Mm -hmm. and he's just i might be wrong i at the end i might be fucking wrong but i feel that he's not the man you would want in charge right now at making decisions because in my opinion it's been proven that he doesn't listen to the people that matter like the scientists he's going to make up his own mind about how and what this thing is and that's the narrative he's going to put forward that's it for his and it's always for his own benefits like not the benefit of the country that's what that's the point of view i have i might be completely wrong but when and it might be also how the media portrays him right because that's the Mm -hmm. only i'm not around the man i'm not there live watching him i can only see what the media portrays but we all know (laughs) it's fucking donald trump yeah. The guy used to be a reality TV host, and now he's in charge of the biggest economy in the world, trying to, to stop a pandemic that's killing hundreds, if not thousands, of people every day at this point. That's and it. it's like he's, he's look here. We're, right we're in it. Canada right now. We don't have even remotely close to as many cases as in the states or in Italy mm-hmm. and stuff. And we're all on fucking lockdown right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because our government not only federally but provincially individually we're like we're locking down we're not taking any chances we need to get ahead of the curve and they just did it and they were like fuck they were they didn't go fuck the economic the economy or fuck the impact that it's going to have on people not having jobs they were like we need to put people's health 100 percent first and we'll figure it out as we go and if people could just understand that people seem to get angry in times like this because they, they're they like, well, we're not ready for this. Our government doesn't know what to do. Of course they don't fucking know what to do. When's the last time we went through something like this? Never. Exactly, never. Ne- the, even the Spanish flu wasn't like this because we live – there's way more people now. We live in an age with social media. We live in an age with all these the, – this shit like – it, no one knows what to do. This is uncharted ter- territory and for everybody, including the people in, in charge. So after a while, even if you're not a liberal, even if you're not conservative, even if you're not into politics, you have to – I said it in a, 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 a few episodes ago on my podcast. I said I, in my opinion right now, they're all doing the best they can with mm-hmm. what – they're given with what they have, with the information. At least our government is willing to listen to the smart people, the, the yeah. doctors and the scientists and go according to their information. That's it. 
We can't ask for anything more right now. We can't be like, well, what about my fucking paycheck? Well, what about your health right now and the fact that we're trying to keep you alive? Well, that, well but that's the thing. Like, like, I feel like, like, because I'm not big on, I'm not big on politics. I'm not big on religion. I don't like to talk about the two of those. But I, I love information. I, I, I'll go on an information spree and I'll like, I'll find one piece of information and then I have to do all my research on it. And then yeah. I happen to remember most of it. Like it, it tends to get annoying sometimes. It's kind of how I deal with anxiety and stress. Yeah, but, that's good. But like the, the the thing that I've noticed about this whole coronavirus, like if, if I'm going to compare Canada because this is where I'm living right now, I'm going to compare Ireland and England because that's where me and, and Jade are from, and then the United States because that's the one that's most publicized right now. And they're all handling it very differently, very, very differently. And I feel like the reason why they're all handling it very differently is because they all have different perspectives of what's going on. So Canada, from what I can see, you know, this this wave of a pandemic was coming. They were like, right, okay, let's, you know, it's, it's an infection. It's when you touch people or when you're talking to people, let's just shut it down. Everyone stay at home, lock down everything, which is what they did. And we have the least cases out of those four countries. All right. The, the Americans... You know, I'm, well, I'm gonna say the Americans. I'm not putting everyone into the same basket, but you know what I mean. I'm just gonna go yeah, with the yeah, Americans yeah. now. They're they're looking at it and they're saying, oh well, we're getting this information from this guy and this information from that guy, and we don't really know. And they're kind of fumbling around their ass a little bit. In England, they're doing this whole thing of, you know, yeah, we'll have our social our social distancing, and we're we're gonna try this and see if it works. And so they're almost like America, but a little bit more educated. Yeah. And a little bit better information. And then Ireland is following Canada. <laughs> Ireland's following Canada in the whole thing. Whatever Canada does, Ireland's doing it straight away. They're like, okay, they they have more educated people than us. They're better equipped than us. They know what they're doing. Let's just do what they do, and they're doing it. Well, I think I think a part of this is that we all I think we can all agree that of all these top countries right now dealing with this bullshit, the United States have the biggest ego, mm-hmm. and they're like their ego is so big. I think that they're not willing to do anything remotely close than any other country is doing because they're like, we're going to do our own thing. We'll figure this out our own, on our own. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like Canada and, and countries like this are like, they're looking at what's going on and, and they looked at what happened in China. Mm-hmm. They're like, what not to do? Let's not do that. Yeah. Then they're looking into <laughs> Italy and Spain and they go, what can we not do? And they're learning and then they're applying those things here before it gets to that point, right? That's it. And as much as people want to complain about it, we are being asked to stay home because it's the safest thing and it's the smartest thing. And frankly, it's the easiest fucking thing you'll ever ask, be oh asked to God. do in your life. Stay I, home. Stay, it, dude, yeah. stay home. It's not that – I seen a bunch of videos of celebrities. I don't know if you've seen this or not. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. A bunch of celebrities all doing um, uh, those those public service announcement things. Yeah. Uh, saying, please, you know, ask your kids to stay at home. Please stay at home. We're asking you as celebrities and you guys listen to us, stay home. And then there was one guy, I can't think of his fucking name now. Um, but he, he's a comedian and he, he was in a bunch of movies back in the 90s. I can't remember his name now. Michael but, uh, Yes. Yeah, I do. Yes. I love that guy. He, did you see the video he brought out? Oh, I see all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he brought out this video of like, you know, I'm not doing this public service now, but it shouldn't need to be done. He's like, why do people listen to celebrities in times of this? Listen to the doctors. He's like, just stay the fuck at home. If you have to, act, like, don't ask your kids, will they stay home? You just fucking make them. You're the adult. Yeah. Why, why does my five-year-old get to dictate when they get to leave the house? Stay the fuck at home. If I you told- see my, like, he actually said, if you see my son outside, Drop kick him in the throat. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> Look, I told I told my wife this earlier, uh, Christine. I said, I said y- we have two kids at home, and we're in charge right now of these kids. Like my kids haven't gone outside except to go for a walk, right? Uh, and they're bored. But I we tell them like, listen, you're not going outside. You're yeah. just not going outside. And they accepted it and. Now they're in their own routine and it's perfect, but you're right. There's a lot of – the thing that scares me is that there's a lot of single parents out there with two, three kids that are stuck at home right now and they don't have the resources like me and my wife do. You know, like we have good jobs and Mm. and 
look, we don't have many much savings, but and we kind of do live paycheck to paycheck, but we still have some sort of income coming in right now. So where you it, know, yeah. and even if it got to the point where we it, it was struggling, like we have we have a support structure, like we have friends, we have family willing to help, you know. There's people that don't have any support. They didn't have it before this, and now they're out of a job because they have to stay at home with the, their kids, their single parents, and they're stuck at home sometimes with young kids that for week. If you're at home for two or three weeks with kids, you, you're going to go crazy. Like I was telling my wife, like I oh, feel yeah. like spoiled because sometimes my kids get on my nerve right now simply by just talking, and I'm like – like. And I'm like, oh, I got to stop because mm. 95% of the time they're good and I'm just getting upset for the 5% of the time that they're not. Yeah. And I'm I like, there's that. people that it's it's the flip. It's like 95% of the time they can't deal with them. Yeah. Because let's be honest, not everybody that has kids are meant to have kids, right? That's and now, it. That's, that's the thing. Now these parents that you know aren't meant to have kids are at home right now <laughs> with with. The one child, two, three, four, five, six, and a husband or a boyfriend they can't they can't smell for more than five minutes or deal with it you're you're creating chaos and the the people that are gonna uh, least benefits benefit from that are the kids, right? Because at the end of That's the day, it. these kids are at home and surrounded by all that tension and all that stress and all that anxiety. and mm. it's it can't be any good. So I, I kind of like realize that, uh, the most important thing from being at home right now is uh, making sure that this is the least uh, the least impactful negatively for my kids. Mm. Like they they're going to come out of this, and it's it's up to me and my wife to dictate how they're going to come out of this That's with it. a positive outcome outlook mm. on it or a negative outlook on it and. That's our job, and it's our responsibility, and not that's, everybody has that outlook, right? That's, that's exactly it, dude, and I, I feel like when all this is all said and done and dust is settled, people are going to realize two things, two very important things in life, all right? Each individual person is going to be able to evaluate their own life and decide if they're happy or not, because like you said, you might have two kids and a husband that you're not really happy with. You're about to very quickly learn that you don't like your husband, yeah, and what, and what you're gonna do about it, or your kids, and what you're gonna do about it. You're gonna very quickly learn that, and you need to get your shit together. So that's so th this whole situation is gonna show a lot of people that side of them that they didn't really know because they were distracted by work or their hobbies or going outside. Now they're forced to be in this situation and have to chew on it and deal with it, which is gonna be a good thing in the long run. The other thing that people are gonna very quickly realize is things could always be worse. I I, I used to say that to people all the time. Things can always be worse. No matter how bad it is, things can always be worse. And my go-to example was milk could have pulp. <laughs> that's how that's how much worse things could be. Milk be could disgusting. have pulp. In it. Exactly. It'd be fucking horrible. You'd never be able to have a cup of coffee ever again with milk in it. Fuck but, that shit. Oh but, fuck you. Yeah, God, you, now yeah. I can't have milk anyway. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's it's nasty. But but when I say things could always be worse, right? People are saying, "Oh, I, I don't have my paycheck, or you know, uh, I I'm struggling, like you know, I'm struggling with this situation, or I'm struggling with that situation." I was like, "Yeah, but imagine trying to struggle with all those situations and have coronavirus." Yeah. Like, does a you does wouldn't a give a shit anymore about your paycheck if you caught if you got sick to the point exactly. where you needed to be in the hospital? Yeah, because your paycheck's not going to cover it. It's not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, uh, there's a friend of mine uh, back in Ireland, and he put it up on Facebook today that he has tested positive for coronavirus. And he was in a room in a hospital and he spoke, he didn't speak to a single person. He wasn't allowed in contact with absolutely anybody. He had to stay in this room for two weeks on his own. They left food at the door. It was almost like a um, solitary confinement for a prison. Yeah. And I asked the way he explained it. And he said, the, the noise of the old man in the next room coughing was the only human interaction he had for two weeks. Wow. That's all he had, and then they they said he's doing he's doing okay physically, but a little bit mentally. He said he was he's feeling a bit down, but they let let him go home. They said like, oh, here's your medication and stuff. We're gonna send you to go home. Isolate yourself at home. Stay at home. Don't go outside. Now he's at home. Got and he's, he's he's he has his phone. He's able to go on his computer. He's able to do a few projects and stuff. And it's the little things now that he's really enjoying. 
just the little things being able to all those books he never wanted to read because he's no nah, no I couldn't be arsed and I know I'll do it later he's he's plowing through book after book after book now you know because it's the little things that you don't realize that you want to do or the little things that you don't appreciate now you're going to fucking appreciate them yeah and I feel like that's going to happen for everybody now well I told my wife I said I think that uh, a lot of people are going to realize what is really important and the the, the small a lot of people are going to stop sweating the small stuff, mm-hmm. like the small things in life that annoy you and that that turn you into this angry person or That's turn it. you into this. Uh, like, I'll give you an example. This morning I got up and I said, I need I need to go to the weed store. I heard they're mm-hmm. still open. So I went to the weed store, got me some weed. Yeah, and then I, I needed th- then I needed to go to to Walmart to get some groceries. So my wife gave me a list. And on my way from the weed store to the Walmart, I got a fucking flat tire. No. And normally, normally you get a flat tire, it's a piss off. You're like, fuck yeah. my life, right? It's the first thing that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. And I just stopped. I I was like, eh, whatever. I put the spare tire on. It took me 10 minutes. I put the other tire in my back. I went to Walmart. I finished my groceries. And I didn't stress out about it because I was like, this is not the time. Mm-hmm. That I need to overreact for a fucking flat tire that I cannot control. And I think a lot of people um, always stress themselves and create this anxiety because I'm like that over mm-hmm. things they, they can't control. They they get anxious over things they can't control. And, That's it. And this is a perfect example. Like I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety since the beginning of this. Uh, but – the, every day, it's like I try to pr- reprogram myself like, dude, whatever happens, mm-hmm. whatever happens in an hour, whatever happens in tomorrow, whatever happens in a week, you have zero control over it. All you can control is your environment and make sure you maximize, you minimize your chance of either getting sick or getting other people sick. That's it. It's the only p- thing you can control right now. And I think people aren't willing to let go of that control because they feel like they're by, by, by being at home and, and – just listening to everybody else, they feel that they don't have the control. They don't feel they feel like someone else is controlling them because they're being asked yeah. to do something they don't want to do, and they are yeah. like, "Well, I'm not sick," and I'm like, "It's it's so selfish." It is. It's really selfish. And like the the, the way I look at it is like 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 JD even said to me, like <laughs> uh, JD even said she's walking to get a jumper. Uh, she said to me the other day, she said, you know, as long as we do the best that we can for ourselves here in our house to make sure that we're clean and the doors are clean and we're, we're, we're washing our hands and being vigilant and stuff. As long as we know we're doing everything we can, everything we can, and if we still get it, we know we did everything we could. Like, after a point, like, you can't worry so much. Like, That's it. And I understand it's hard for people, trust me, because I, I went through it and I go through it on a daily basis. Not mm-hmm. just for this, but even before this. This It's a constant battle. So. That's it. I, and that's why I kind of put out that podcast a couple of episodes ago because I think that's an extremely important thing to realize is that a lot of people right now that deal with mental health are at home right now and that a lot of their distractions have been taken away from them. A lot of people that deal with – a lot of men that deal with anxiety, they default mm-hmm. to sports as their distraction. There's no that's sports it. right now. Nope. And if you if you can't have your daily distraction or your daily dose of something that makes you happy – Man, you're gonna spiral out of control, and that's why it's important to try to. In these times, you're stuck at home. You're like, you gotta find something else that's to it. occupy your time, learn something new, do something else that you've never done before. Create a board and, game. Yeah, do that. And I think the first week and a half, the thing that I noticed, and I mentioned it in my last, uh, in my episode I recorded yesterday, mm. is that when this whole thing started. People just defaulted. They're like, I'm going to occupy my time on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. That's it. And then they became these social media addicts instantly because mm-hmm. they were like, oh, this is such a good distraction. And it is. And if that's your only way to get distracted and in, or to be happy or to not stress yourself over this whole thing while yeah. you're at home, go for it. Let yourself free. Do the videos. Show people who you fuck you really are because that's yeah. another thing this is going to show a lot of people is that 
that it's going to show the character in a lot of people because oh yeah definitely there's a lot of people right now that I don't hear or see or talk about on social media and I'm like why are you so quiet all of a sudden well that's it like I, I actually put a post I, I don't use Facebook a lot I, I just don't I, just, I, I feel like Facebook annoys me but I, I go on every now and again and I'll, I might post something or I might go on and like a few things and that's it I'm kind of done with it I usually stick to Twitter and Instagram it's kind of my things see me it's just Instagram so that's, well, well Twitter is only a new thing for me like I only like I, I had it for years never really used it and like the last couple of days I've kind of started to get used to it a little bit better so yeah. I'm kind of starting to get into it but I went on to Facebook the other day and I was reading through a couple of, uh, of, of like comments and pages and stuff and I was like whoa people are actually showing their personalities and I put a post up and I said, what is it that's going on that everyone is now all of a sudden has a great personality on Facebook? What's, like, what's after happening? And I actually got a couple of messages from people saying, hey, like, are you taking shots at somebody? I was like, yeah, I'll take a shot at the whole fucking world. Because everyone claims to be the, you know, the best version. I'm being the best version of me and you know, I'm, I'm, be, I'm being the best me I can be and all this. Sort of, and everyone you know, not doing fucking shit. Yeah. Now, now everyone's given you know free spin classes on on social media. Everyone's given free workouts on social media. Not they're not charging for it. But Where was this before? Where was four, this person? Four, four weeks ago, you were asked for sixty bucks for this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying no. Now everyone's like no no no. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the nice person now and I'm gonna give it to you for free. Well, I think so, certain people see an opportunity, and I spoke with that with Christine yesterday. Mm. I a lot of people, and I, even me, like. I don't see the opportunity in in uh, in uh, profiting or anything from from this situation. But what I told her is that I need to take advantage of the fact that I'm at home. I have nothing else to do. If if other people are also at home with nothing else to do and they want to be on the podcast and I could do it through Skype, why not contact all these people and book as many as possible and record as many as possible? And also work on my YouTube content and also work like if th- that was already the plan before this and it was for us, why sh- can I see this as an opportunity to just now I have the time to actually work on it all day, every day for four weeks? How Hell much yeah. progress can I make in those four, five, six weeks, however long I'm going to be at home? I'm not looking to profit out of someone else's misery, but I'm, I'm I have to see the positive in this that like you have to go like well this is an opportunity for me i'm at home i'm not at work i Mm. i I don't lose those eight hours that i'm at work use those eight hours and still do something like you were at work at work still input that energy somewhere else and i I love doing this and i'm like yeah that's all i'm gonna do I, i i wrote on my board i wrote a bunch of names and i started contacting people and i'm like i'm just gonna people want to come on by skype they can come on by skype it's it. easy and it works and I'm like That's so I saw an opportunity but I think a lot of people are seeing an opportunity like how can I profit from this That's it that's it how can I make money from this How can I get a million followers by off oh I'll offer free spin class so when people are back on their feet I can go back to offering 60 but now instead of having 30,000 followers now I have 1.2 million followers That's it right Look as a business person, the part, the business mind out of me goes, mm. fucking genius. Oh, yeah, but, totally. But there's a part of me that also goes like, from the beginning, your goal was never to just be a nice person and give it up for free. Or it was, but also in the back of your mind, you're like, later on, this is going to, this is going to pay itself back. That's it. Right? Like, like don't get me wrong. There's people out there um, that are doing things online which is really really cool like like there's a there's a friend of mine who does teach spin and like no, normally her class is like 45 dollars a class and she's doing she brought a bike home and she's doing classes online live with people and she's doing it for free but she is saying if you feel like donating yeah that you know what that's fine because you still got a business to run and you're asking for donations i get that that's totally fine but when you're saying i'm going to give you this class for free and I'm the great person because I'm giving it to you, to you for free. I was like, well, why weren't you giving it to me for free six weeks ago? Tell your friends how great I am because I offer this great service for you for free. And That's a lot it. of people are ex- they're secretly expecting that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that right now, considering we're stuck at home, it creates opportunities for people. It There's a demand mm-hmm. for certain things. And right now, 
training, online training, offering different programs online where people can just join. Like, I mean, what Jade is doing with the yoga, I mean, it's yeah. fantastic because you kind of foster, you know, it's done in a way where you're just trying to foster a community of people and like minded people That's so it. that we can all share a daily distraction and stay healthy and do our workouts and do all that shit. Right. But not everybody thinks like that. Right. But at the end of the day, this situation, this pandemic creates a demand for things done through fucking this kind of shit, through online, That's through it. being able to work from home. And <clears throat> if this is going to give the opportunity for a lot of people to discover that they actually have a talent, that they can actually work from home mm -hmm. and create content or cr create a service that people are going to be willing to pay for and you could just do from the, the comfort of your own home, then – Fuck yeah, man. Do it. I mean, why yeah. not, right? It's That's the it. future. And like one of the first thing I posted uh, when this whole thing started is that I feel there's a part of me that feels like this. I feel I there's a part of me that believes we live in a fucking simulation. Oh, yeah. I'm, and, with, you uh, I'm with you with that. I feel like the simulation just either figured out a way to uh, expedite the uh, full immersion into technology Mm -hmm. by making us stay at home or the it either figure that out or it either when you motherfuckers are getting there too fast you guys need That's to it. slow it down it can't be either or it, it can't be in the middle i think it's one or the other it's That's either it. you're going to full fully immerse yourself into social media then that leads to either is it going to be a positive or in a negative way Mm -hmm. And then you could branch out into these different venues, but you either choose to fully immerse or even immerse yourself even more than you are now, or you could choose the, the path of fuck this. Uh, I'm going to fully disconnect and slow everything down and realize that by slowing everything down, I, I don't feel like I'm aging as fast. I don't feel yeah. like I'm losing my time. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm wasting a lot of my life on nonsense. A lot of people are going to quickly realize that, dude, I can't keep stressing myself out over money. I went through this. They're going to go through this. And at the end, when everything is okay and their kids are okay and their parents are okay and everybody's okay, they're going to go, yeah, I lost money. Yeah, it was a struggle. But, but look, alive. we made they're it. Alive. We're, our life is starting to re come back to normal. So, like, okay, I can go through this. And it, I think it's going to teach a lot of people, like, I'm tougher than I actually thought I was. And mm -hmm. then it's going to be a positive benefit down the road. And uh, that's all I can hope for. You know, that's and, it, dude. I mean, I mean, like everyone's got to do their own, their own thing and everyone's got to try to figure out their own way of coping with it and dealing with it and hopefully doing it in a positive way. Like for me, like I think I've left, like I leave the house once a day. I leave, I leave the house once a day and that's to walk the dog. Yeah. And we walk the dog two or three times a day. Jay might walk him once and then I'll walk him once. Or we might walk him together and then I'll walk him in the evening or something like that. I leave once a day. And for me for me to try to be, like, I need to be creative in order to deal with any anxiety or any stress or any, I, I need to be. So, hence me, I'm building a board game, you know, I'm... Yeah. I'm, I'm cooking more, I'm, you know, doing all sorts of weird, I'm designing wrestling gear, I'm playing, like, different video games so I can learn how, like, I'm designing cars, I'm designing all these, I like to play with little things, and do, doing things like that helps me focus and kind of narrow in and block out any negativity and things like that, but it also helps me slow down, because I can't rush any of these things, you can't rush designing wrestling gear, you can't rush building a board game from scratch you can't rush making a podcast you have to yeah. take your time with all of it and i feel like that has helped me to slow down quite a bit throughout the whole thing and process everything and deal with everything at the same time but not everyone's able to do it that way unfortunately everyone has to because we're in a world of instant gratification right and now all of a sudden yeah. that instant gratification is now gone and i fully i fully agree with you i fully believe we, we are probably in some sort of weird uh, simulation and they're saying hey this is our way of saying now we're going to have a, a natural selection. Let's see who lives. Or they're saying slow down, stop. Yeah. This, this is like, you know, you, need, you guys need to stop what you're doing, take a couple of steps back, smell the roses, and now you can move on to the next level. Yeah. It, I, I tend to go in that direction because for me, that's what seems to be happening in my life right now mm. is that it's putting everything in perspective. 
yes, I had a plan and a, 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 a end goal for my life and for my family. Mm. And this kind of <clears throat> this kind of fucks things up. If I if I if I let it, it would fuck things up. I, but I don't want it to be fucked up, and I don't want it to be slowed down any either way. And it doesn't have to be even in this situation. So I'm just trying to stay the course as much as possible. Yeah. Right? Sorry. But how dare you? How dare you cough? Oh, my- I coughed it. <laughs> but there's there's a part of me that also goes. You're going to at the end of this, you're going to eliminate a lot of things out of your life that just add added this extra pressure that you just didn't need. Yeah. And it's going to make things a lot easier to bear. And I have a feeling that at the end of this, my anxiety is going to be a lot less worse because I it's kind of like. I was in the fire for the first two weeks where it was like anxiety all day, every day. And now it's like getting better every day, you know, as, as Good. things get back to normal, right? Like, uh, I'm not saying back to normal, but this is becoming the new normal. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Not being able to leave. This is, you don't think about it as much as you did the first week. You're like, fuck. And they, this is only Mondays. Like, like I asked my wife yesterday, I'm like, what day of the week are we? Like, I truly like, are we Thursday? Are we Friday? She's like, we're Friday. I'm like, it's what, like what we in for Saturday. Saturday today. Yeah, I don't See, like it's what like were in. <laughs> because you don't. It's weird because you remove that part of your life work that basically forced you to know what day it is. That's it. When you stay at home, you have no need to know what day it is because everything is open seven days a week anyway. So you don't need to know what day it is, right? You're like that's it. What day are we? Like when you're at home, just staying at home, you don't need to know what time it is because you don't have to get up at any time. Like there are certain yeah. things that don't become a necessity anymore. Me knowing the day of the week is not really a necessity right now because every day is get up, stay home, <laughs> keep yourself occupied, go back to bed, you know? That's it. It's, it's like, like wake up, do something, go back to bed. Wake up, do something, go back. Like – and the, fun, the funny thing is, I uh, since I've, I've been staying at home, I've actually been napping less. Like I, I, I am a person who likes to nap. I do like to yeah. nap every now and again. But since all this has been going on, I actually have been napping less because, <laughs> yeah, like like I'm, I'm 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 occupying myself so much that I'm forgetting to. Yeah. Plus, you're doing you're occupying yourself by with things that you actually enjoy doing. That's it. And it doesn't mentally drain you and then physically drain you. Exactly. Like one of the things that I'm going to that I didn't impose the first couple of weeks because, number one, the anxiety was too much. And I was just trying to cope and trying to Mm. center myself into like, okay, where is this all going? But now that I'm like, this is going to be at least for another three, four weeks or whatever, how long this fucking thing is going to be like, I need to get myself in in a routine now. Like so every day it's going to be like I need to work, but I, I can't go to my work work, but I need to do something use my personal projects that I used to work on the side. Now that's my job. And every day I mm. need to put hours yeah. into that because I need to stay productive and I'm yeah. productive in something that I actually love doing and that I would do for free and I get to do for free now. And I don't lose eight hours, uh, go to, to go make, you know, to go collect a paycheck basically. And that's it. It's like it's like like on a normal on a normal day to day basis, you got to go work for somebody else, do their work for them in order to make money to pay for things. And then when you want to do the things you want to enjoy, you haven't got the energy, or you haven't got the time, or you haven't got the the mindset for it. <clears throat> My turn. And and then like you know you know if you want to go to the gym, let's say after an eight hour shift, you get to go to the gym, and then you got to to drive there to drive home. By the time you get home, now it's 9 p.m. You gotta have dinner. You gotta eat. You gotta get, you gotta get that sustenance in after the workout. Now you're talking 10:30 after you cooked and eaten. In your case, your kids gotta go to bed. You gotta look after the kids as well. Where's the time for the project? You gotta be up at 7 a.m. to go to work. Yeah. You know I mean, it's it's very difficult. And when you're a wrestler, then you go, well, I'll work at it on the weekends, but then you wrestle on Saturday. You wrestle. You, yeah. you know me, like I. It doesn't matter if I only wrestle at seven, and even if it's local, like I'm I'm zero productive on wrestling days because all oh, yeah. i think about is wrestling right that's it like I'm, i have it on my I'm, mind i'm already planning i'm, I'm planning to, from the night before straight away i've you been know, for me it was like thursday afternoon to friday saturday till i had my match it was all it was basically 80 percent of my thoughts when i'm not talking it's like 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I have a wrestling match on Saturday. Where am I going with this? What's my plan? How am I going to do this? Who's my opponent? You know? Yeah. Uh, going th- And also, for me, I it's an, there's an anxiety buildup yeah, all the way sure. through to the thing. I'm only – it's weird. Huh? As I tell my wife, I was telling Christine, I said, when I get, got injured, uh, it was four or five weeks ago, and I couldn't wrestle anymore, it mm-hmm. took me – it literally like took me up till like maybe last week or the week before where I would uh, Thursday would come around and I would start feeling this anxiety and I'm like mm-hmm. I would verbally tell myself you're not resting on Saturday and then the, that anxious energy would go away because yeah. I wouldn't have to worry about my match on Saturday because being an anxious person you're all just the fact that I'm resting makes me anxious. Like, mm-hmm. is everything going to be okay? I hope I don't get injured. I hope something doesn't happen, blah, blah, blah. You go through these scenarios in your head. Plus, you're going, I hope I have a good match. Mm-hmm. I hope that I have a yeah. good, my opponent is good. I hope things go well, blah, blah, blah. That there's so much, uh, plus the, the, the pressure of performing, mm-hmm. all that shit. You know what it is. And it's like... I haven't had that now, and now no one has that. So I'm sure a lot of people are like, fuck, man, why am I so relaxed all of a sudden? It's because, yeah, you're not – you don't have that nervous energy like from like you know f- from performing on Friday night. Some that's people it. fucking wrestle two or three times a weekend, you know? That's that's the thing, dude. Like Some people perform two or three nights a weekend, and I mean I'm, I'm sure if they're an anxious person, their anxiety is kicking in on Monday. And you know they're they're anxious right through to, to, to Thursday, then they're wrestling Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and yeah. then they're back anxious again on Monday. Dude, it happens. It happens to a lot of people, and and the funny thing is, is like we 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 deal with all that stuff, and you know, if you're an anxious person, you know, you, you're anxious. I'm anxious. You know, you become like a little ball of of anxiety when you're when you're a wrestler, and you, when you're doing it, you, like you come up with different reasons as to why you're doing it. I'm doing this to provide for my family. I'm doing this because I love it, and you keep trying to remember all this stuff mm. to help unwind that ball. And it was funny because. Somebody, I think it was John Morrissey, had a had a post up on Facebook the other day. I don't know if you've seen it, but he said, uh, "I've calculated uh, all all the money um, from wrestling that I would have, you know, that I would have gotten if I had had shows over the time of the quarantine, and it looks like I've saved two hundred and fourteen dollars." <laughs> <laughs> especially like, as an independent wrestler, right? Especially as an independent wrestler, I was like, "Yo, I'm doing I'm doing this for no money," and you know, and and, and then when you when you sit back and you stop for a minute and you're like. Okay, now now is the point when I need to realize um, I, I, if I'm going to keep wrestling because we haven't been able to do it for a little while now because of, because of what's going on. Yeah. So if if you're not able to do it and then you you realize all the all the anxiety is leaving you, all the tension is leaving you, all the stress is leaving you from it, and you're like, now is the time you get to say to yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Do I want to step back into feeling like a ball of anxiety? Or do I want to step back into into feeling like I'm a nervous wreck the whole time? Mm-hmm. Is it is it now worth me doing that? And it's okay to admit it because a lot of people will never admit that because they'll be like, well, that means you just never really liked wrestling and you didn't love it enough to just go through all the bullshit and just push through and become as great as you could be. I think that for someone like me and you, that we have have lives outside of wrestling. Not Mm -hmm. saying that guys don't, but there are certain guys that their, their whole identity is being a pro wrestler. That's it. And that's okay if like I I was talking to this early on on an earlier podcast that I recorded this morning. We were talking about John Jones, mm. and I'm like, when you're a, a stud athlete, championship caliber fighter like him, you can't have anything else in your life but to eat, breathe, and and do MMA and to be that's the it. greatest of all time. You your I, your full identity has to be that. You can't you don't have time to to be doing movies on the side, to be doing interviews, to be doing all these projects. You're a fucking fighter and you're the greatest to ever do it. Once these fucking guys don't have that anymore, it's not a it's not a, a, a possibility anymore, either by retirement, injury, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. They, they become lost because they have no idea who they are as a person because they never took the time to search out who they really are outside of being a mixed martial artist. And I think well, that's, that's extremely dangerous for athletes and it's extremely dangerous for professional wrestlers because I think that the like I don't even know what the percentage is, but what's the percentage of professional wrestlers that end up making a living 
a long run really living out of just professional wrestling. Well, I'm, I'm, if I was to venture a guess, I'd say less than half a percentage. Right? It's like I mean, how many people only had one match? How many people only had five matches? How many people put in all this energy to have three or four matches just to say, fuck this, I'm not made for this? Mm-hmm. Thousands, if not millions. And then, then you have the crazy motherfuckers like us that go – yeah, and and we're not even like I don't know about you, but for me it's like I can't even I speak out of turn because I'm still a rookie, I'm still new, I'm fucking four years into the business. Uh, I just see it from a different pers- perspective because I'm 39 years old and I I got into the business late. Yeah. But but like not just professional wrestling, it's like man, there and and the best guys doing it on the independent scene right now are the guys that are all in on professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. They're all yeah, in. Completely. Like, what, like if I look at a guy like, uh, like uh, uh, Channing Decker, yeah, that motherfucker is all in on professional wrestling, and he is. You could tell he's a rising star. People are starting to notice him. He's he's gone to Japan. He's been like, but that motherfucker eats, breathes professional wrestling. He doesn't have a life outside of professional wrestling, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's no, oh. but look how beneficial it is to his career. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. If I put forward that same energy into just professional wrestling, I mm. would definitely be a lot higher and a, and a better position right now. But unfortunately, I have a family, I have kids, and I have a a, a vision of a life one day that doesn't include me being a professional wrestler. And yeah. I'm staying that course. I see professional wrestling as a part of my life right now. I don't know how long it's going to be part of my life. It might be part of my life until I die, hmm. but I'm not willing to, to to say that. I'm just willing to say that right now it's it's where I'm at, and I'm allowing it. I am in control of allowing how much energy I decide to put towards that pursuit. And yeah. if if I choose to put 65%, then nobody can judge me on the reason why I'm only putting forward 65%. That's it. I'm putting forward 65% or 50 or 30 or whatever it is because I have other things in my life that that constitutes the 100% and those things are either as or more important yeah. than the professional wrestling right now. And I play a balancing act. I throw things you, in the air and I'm you're like – You're juggling. You're just juggling the whole time. Right? That's it. I mean for me it was always a case of you know, I, I, I will eat, sleep and breathe wrestling till a certain point. I will do it till I'm a certain age or until I feel like I'm not able to to do it anymore or I feel like life is just getting too far. Because I, 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 like, I've, I've always wanted to be a dad. You know what I mean? Like yeah. at, a certain, at a certain point, I want to be a dad. And I know that when I get to a certain point, it's going to become too late. So I, I, I gave myself a cutoff point as to when wrestling can no longer be the A-all and B-all. Yeah. And that doesn't mean I love wrestling any less than someone who's going to continue to do that. It means I also want this as well. And I've sacrificed all of this stuff so I can do the wrestling to that point. And yeah, you, it's like you could, you're going to get to a point where you allow wrestling to, to eat up less of a, the pie. It's going to be like, it. I used to give it this much. Now I'm only able to give it this much because there's something else in my life that I need or want to pursue or like you said like once you have kids that, that those kids are going to take a huge chunk and what's important also as a parent for me is that you need to realize that at a certain point it doesn't matter what your aspirations are what your goals or stuff it's about your kids that's and it if you don't see it like that then you're not being the best possible version of a parent for your mm-hmm. kids because at the end of the day yeah. you're still putting your uh yourself in before them and you can't yeah. allow yourself to put your dreams before their well-being and all that thing and once you you say it once you realize that then everything else becomes easier and less of a worry of like well how did i put enough time into a and b this week no, because C took too much of my time. And mm. you got to go – certain weeks are going to be like that. And That's like, it. It's, it's a learning curve. 
and I, I I tend to not try to schedule my life too much because all the pursuit I have in my life are too uh, they're uh, it's like it's too flammable. Like you yeah. gotta be around them, but sometimes you're like, fuck, I can't contain this motherfucker. Flames are going out. C might have to take a back seat for this week because I need to put out the fire in B and A right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's how I live my life. And and I I would never come close to saying that that I, you included, people like us, live any sort of normal life. Like being a an, an entertainer, a professional wrestler. Doing the things we do, podcasting, mm-hmm. putting ourselves out there, being open and honest about who we are and what we are. You create this persona for people that mm-hmm. see you and go like, you better be telling me the truth about who you really are because I'm starting to invest time in you and just listening to That's what you it. have to say. And if you're not willing to be honest and and straightforward about who you are and be the person you are and your what your intentions are – it you can only fake it for so long and it's going to come out and if you're not genuine and transparent people are going to see through the bullshit right away and i feel and that, that and that's why the tiger king's in prison I, there you go <laughs> there, that, there's no better way to end this than that right there <laughs> I got to go take care of my kids because uh, they've been wreaking havoc. My wife was gone to the pharmacy. I don't even know if she's back yet. But uh, yeah, I, think, I, I, I hope think my house is on, isn't works. on fire. Yeah, it, it could be. Hey, I've done a lot worse when I was a kid. Fuck, man. Listen, man, I appreciate you took the time to come man, uh, on my podcast. Yeah, it was dude, amazing, man. Dude, let's definitely do this again. Yeah, sure. next time we do it for your podcast. Hey, I'm down. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'll, uh, I'll get uh, get in contact this week there and see. Maybe we'll do it again next week or something. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll give you a call some more during the week. Just checking on you. See how you doing. All right, all right, man. Say hi to Jay for me. All right, I will do. Say hi to Chrissy and the kids. All right, love you too. Love Ciao. You too, man. Bye bye.